I've been making videos for this channel for, what is it, about eight months or thereabouts. So I think it's about time to tell you who I am and how I got here. Hey, how's it going? I'm Will from Iron Will Multisport Australia, your place to find tips, tricks and experience in triathlon, multisport and endurance events and training. My triathlon journey has had quite a few ups and downs. To begin with, I was never much of a sporty type until when I was in university and a friend of mine, Lockie, invited me to go for a run. Uh, I hadn't really been for a run since I was in high school, so I said, yeah, sure, why not? Turned out it was about a 10k run and I absolutely loved it. This got me hooked on running. So about two years later, I was ready to enter my first ever marathon, which was gonna be the Canberra Marathon. The marathon itself went great. I got under four hours. So I think it was about three hours 52, something like that. But unfortunately, I also came away with IT band syndrome or, and or runner's knee. I didn't actually get it checked out at a physio, but that's pretty certain as to what it was. And going through this made me think that I would probably never run a marathon again. So I kind of gave up for a few years. And so next I decided to take up a sport that had a little less impact. I borrowed my dad's bike and started cycling. In 2012, I was missing running too much so I decided to give it another go. Although try and keep it at shorter distances. And this worked out great for a while. Since my friend Lockie saw me getting back into running and I was already cycling, he invited me to join for the Ironman 70.3 Western Sydney, so I started training for that. First race for that year was the Port Stephens Olympic length triathlon, which went great. I had so much fun. Later on that year, I decided to do as a sort of warm up for the half Ironman, I decided to do a half marathon in Sydney. And unfortunately managed to get IT band syndrome once again. I have a big problem, I've been through it in previous videos with supination, so I put the weight on the outside of my feet really heavily. And I also tended to overstride. I uh, tended to land in front of my center of gravity. Um, I also tended to heel strike. And while each of these things won't necessarily cause injury to you, when they were all put together, and I wasn't giving myself adequate training and adequate warm up, warm down, all that sort of stuff, it caused injury. So for the next few years, again, I gave up on running for a little bit and I decided to take up another sport. So I decided to go for Kung Fu, which is the uh, jacket that I'm wearing. And then one of my friends at Kung Fu, Simon, recommended that I have a look into barefoot style running. So I mentioned to him that I loved running and I missed running, but that I really couldn't run the way I was running. Yes, yeah, so he mentioned I look into barefoot running and that sort of style, and so I did and started giving it a bit of a go, started building up and up, and things seemed to be getting better. While I didn't go barefoot running so much, I did purchase some Vibram Five Fingers, so those weird toe shoes, and they were great at forcing me to focus on my running style, rather than relying on the shoe to take the load off the run for me because obviously that wasn't working the last couple of times I ran a marathon and a half marathon. In 2016, I reached the level of black belt in Kung Fu, which was awesome, although a lot of hard work and then unfortunately in 2017 my Kung Fu Sifu uh, Randy Bennett unfortunately passed away from mantle cell lymphoma so as since I was starting up running again I decided to run in the city to surf that year dressed in a lion dance costume and then also following on from that running in the Blackmores Marathon dressed in a Kung Fu uniform, aiming to set the Guinness World Record title for the fastest marathon run in a Kung Fu uniform. Both of these in memory to my Kung Fu Sifu. And it was a good thing that I was doing all that training in Vibram Five Fingers because as part of the Kung Fu uniform marathon, I had to run in Kung Fu slippers, which there's not much to them at all. They're pretty much like running barefoot. So I did the marathon and I managed to set the Guinness World Record title for the fastest marathon run in a Kung Fu uniform. And I set a personal best for a marathon, so I got 3 hours 50 and 38 seconds, officially. And no injury. So this new focus on my running style was really paying off, and this allowed me to finally get back into running properly, and get back into triathlon properly. With this new confidence that I could now run safely without injuring myself, 
I decided to sign up to the Ironman Australia after seeing my friend Lockie, who's the same guy that got me to go for that 10k run several years earlier. He was doing the full Ironman, and I thought, I'm gonna do this, since I can. As part of this, I also decided to sign up for the Ironman Western Sydney, so the Ironman 70.3 Western Sydney, which is the same Ironman that I had to pull out of back in 2014, due to IT band syndrome. And also to try to ensure that I was adequately prepared for the race, I decided to go with coaching. So I got coaching from John Hill, uh, who's also here in Sydney. My first triathlon back in the game was the Nepean Triathlon, which was around the time when I started this channel. Following on from this, I went to the Ironman Western Sydney 70.3. This was at the same venue as the Nepean Triathlon, so the Nepean Triathlon was a great warm-up for it. And in the Ironman Western Sydney 70.3, I managed to smash my estimated time. I was hoping for about six hours, but I ended up getting about five hours and six minutes. After that, we had, there was the club champs, and I don't think I had any other races between the half Ironman and the full Ironman, apart from the club championships. So that was, that ended up being a duathlon. It was supposed to be a triathlon, but it ended up being a duathlon. And then finally, May came around. And May the 5th was when the Ironman Australia at Port Macquarie was going to happen. And on May the 3rd, I started to get sick. <laughs> Unfortunately, I got really blocked up in my nose. I started to just feel a bit nauseous, headachey, that sort of thing. I was coming down with something. But no plans go perfectly. So I still decided to go ahead with the race. I was going to just pull back a little bit. I didn't want to overexert myself, overheat, possibly cause longer lasting injury. So I just had fun with it and decided I was just going to try and finish. The race was a roller coaster of emotions. The swim was great. I, it was the fastest swim I've ever done. I did that in about an hour and 15 minutes, thereabouts. So I got out of the swim. That was about 15 minutes faster than I thought I was going to do and thought, I'm feeling quite good. Bike, first lap was excellent. I felt great along the first lap, but then the second lap, not so good. The wind started picking up, started feeling nauseous and tired, and I just, yeah, really, I was really running low on energy. And I couldn't really take in much nutrition. I just didn't feel like eating. It just didn't sit well. And coming into the run, it just got worse. I had to run quite slow. It was quite painful for me to think about as I was doing it. I just wanted to go faster, but I just couldn't. And every time I took nutrition in, I had to go to the bathroom at pretty much every aid station. It was very annoying, it really slowed down my run. The whole thing hurt like hell. But in the end, I made it. I got to the finish line in 13 hours and 25 minutes. I had friends of mine from uh, the triathlon club that I'm a part of, so Balance UTS, at the finish line that were cheering me on. I high-fived them. It was glorious. And in the end, it doesn't matter if you don't achieve your goal. Like, if you set a goal of under 11 hours and you don't achieve that, that doesn't matter so much. What matters is that you go out there and you give it all you've got. You put in the best effort that you can at that given time and you enjoy yourself and get as much out of it as you can. My goal of under 11 hours can be achieved another year, maybe next year, maybe the year after. But for now, I know that I've finished an Ironman. I completed the Ironman and I've got the shirt and tattoo to prove it. What got you into the sport? Let us know in the comments section down below. If you want triathlon content every week from here in Australia, then hit that like and subscribe button and I will see you in the next one. Cheerio.